Look, we all know the story of Superman and how he became one of the greatest heroes in the entire DC universe. A fan favorite blessed with a power that rivals that of gods. But what if we took that power and threw it into the My Hero Academia verse? How would that impact the story? Well, watch to the end to find out. Hey Ross, sauce it up. We start a story in stereotypical fashion. The birth of Kal-El, or his human name, Izuku Midoriya. Born looking just like Deku in the original, so no changes there, and the imminent destruction of his planet still being a thing. This leads to Izuku being sent off and then crash landing on Earth, only to be found by both Inko and Hiyashi, who were both simple farm workers making ends meet until suddenly their lives were changed when a miracle child appeared. And, well, both of them looking at this boy just decided to raise them. I mean, they couldn't have a child of their own, so this was as if God had sent them to them. They were thankful. Izuku would spend most of his childhood helping his dad out with the family farm and watching as much All Might content as, as he possibly could, as well as hero stuff, seeing as this was just the kind of things that Izuku just loved to see. He would grow up idolizing All Might and train with his dad to control his powers. Obviously, his dad didn't have the same powers, but he would help him get a decent control over them, telling him that he's free to train here, seeing as they have a huge amount of land that they grow crops on, so Izuku could use his flight abilities and get used to his x-ray vision, his super hearing, and things of that nature. Through the years, Izuku got better and better at using his powers, and even though at first it was kind of a, uh, a, it was kind of a hindrance, seeing as he was not used to the climate, the gravity of this planet, or any of its, you know, and any of its features that came with this planet, it was a little tough to get used to. But after growing up with his father and mother in an, in an insanely good environment, Izuku, well, he got the hang of things and became very powerful, very strong for his age. Izuku and Inko noticed that Izuku had these strange abilities. He had super strength. He could fly. He had powerful breath. He had a x-ray vision. He had heat visions, enhanced hearing, super speed, and insane durability. Suffice to say, Izuku was stacked from the jump. And I'm not about to downplay him either to make the story make sense or anything like that. He's going to be as strong as he is in the movies and in the shows. I guess in the comics as well, but he'll never have to go all out to be honest. That said, one day Zuku would be working out on the farm like usual when his father would pretty much end up pulling up on him while he was using his super breath to cool down the crops. This is when his mother and dad would end up telling him about them saving up money to send him to UA and Izuku when he hears this he would say, wait, mom. Dad, you're you're not serious, right? They both look at him, nod, and Izuku would be so happy, jumping with joy. He would literally leap to the air and just begin flying in circles, being like, Woohoo! You know what I mean? Like this man is excited. And Inko and Ayashi would look at each other, look down, and kind of have smiles on their faces as they both know that they really could not ever afford this. But they're gonna do what they have to do. And if it means selling a little acres of land to help him get started with the first year of UA, then that's what they'll do. They'll figure out the rest as they go. Izuku would then land and he would explain to them that he is so happy with them saying that they already signed him up and that they know that with a heart like his, he'll be an incredible hero. They embrace and from here, we have a small time skip to the day when Izuku finally has to go take his UA entrance exam. This would go much like many of you would expect. Now, when Izuku would arrive at Yue's doors, he would think to himself that the school was way bigger than he had imagined. So much different seeing it in person than seeing it on a computer screen. He would walk inside and go to take the test, which he does relatively well on. Izuku is not dumb by any means, and my man just aces it. Then, he goes on to proceed to go to the robot portion where he simply sits outside and, you know, he's wearing these basic clothes. He kind of looks a little poor, but everybody was not really paying too much attention to him. Deck is doing a little bit of stretching and it's suddenly when President Mike would begin explaining to everybody that there's no countdown. So they gotta go, go, go! Izuku hearing this would be like, oh, go, okay, okay, yeah, sure. As he flies off, 
like is with a supersonic boom he literally like leaps up into the air and everybody would be pushed back by his strength izuku then goes on to land on top of a robot as he punches it down and destroys the entire thing resulting in an insane explosion and all of the exam proctors that were watching all of this go down would be absolutely stunned they are shocked Izuku would then go on to destroy robot after robot, displaying his insane amount of skills, his heat vision, his x-ray vision to locate new robots at every second he could get. He would grab them and rip them apart with his bare hands and punch through multiple of them. He would end up racking up 100 points before one minute was even over, using his x-ray vision and super breath to absolutely demolish these robots. Using his super speeds to the point where the cameras begin having even trouble keeping up with him. Izuku was in a league of his own entirely and he moved like a pro hero every decision calculated and everything he did was for a reason he threw robots into buildings causing them to explode and he would just just completely manhandle these robots that would have given even pro heroes some trouble this would shock all of the UA proctors, and one of the people who would take a keen interest on him would definitely be All Might. Around this time, he was planning to give the quirk to Mirio, but he hadn't quite decided things. But after seeing this kid in his performance, he decided right there and then that he was going to be a successor. Nezu watching this would think to himself that this kid is having a bright future. This kid is going to be something later in life, and he does not doubt that in any way, shape, or form, Izuku is going to be the next symbol of peace. And from what he's displaying, this is not too many years far-fetched. All Might will maybe finally be able to retire and become a full-time teacher. Izuku would continue destroying robot after robot until eventually the zero pointer would arrive and once Izuku gets glimpse of this giant robot he remembers that um it's worth zero points so he proceeds to continue flying around destroying more robots until eventually using his x-ray vision he could see that somebody was actually screaming out for help not only could he see her through the walls but he could also hear her and him being who he is decides that points or not he's going to save her he begins to fly over the roof as he lands right next to her and he throws the rubble off off of Uraraka. As Uraraka's like, oh, thank you, but we gotta... She looks up and is immediately just scared. She is terrified. Like her life literally flushed out of her eyes. And she looks to Izuku who just has a smile on his face as she just can't breathe. It's, it's as if time stopped. But Izuku holds one hand up and he would stop the zero pointer's foot from crushing them as he topples the entire zero pointer over with one hand the zero pointer would be sent across flying into the into the buildings as izuku would tell her not to worry that he wasn't going to let anything happen to her and uraraka would immediately pass out she is shocked she thought she was going to die but izuku saved her and she could not be more thankful by the time she woke up, he was gone and Izuku, well, had pretty much fled the area. He ended up flying back home at supersonic speeds and ended up arriving in about a couple seconds time. Izuku, he did what he was going to, going there to do. And when he arrived home, he told his parents the good news and how well he had performed, saying that he had saved the girl's life and that he's glad he was there because had he not been there, things might have ended up a little messy. His parents would both be extremely ecstatic and excited at Izuku. Because, I mean, this is all they've ever wanted. Ever since he was a kid, they knew he was special. And, well, they couldn't have expected any less from him. Izuku would then go on to have an extremely good day with his family, where they would celebrate and have an amazing time together. Eventually, the nighttime would arrive, and you guys know how it is. If you guys have ever, like, had your birthday the next day, it's extremely hard to go to sleep when you're extremely excited about something. And Izuku is just happy. He's so excited to get his acceptance letter and he genuinely thinks that he's going to be getting accepted to UA. However, seeing as he can't sleep, he decides to go out and to not wake his parents up, he's really quiet. He ends up going to the kitchen where he finds a bill and it actually says that they're overdue to pay their farmhouse. When Izuku sees this, he's immediately shocked and is wondering what's going on. When he ends up digging further, he finds more overdue bills and decides that Maybe them saving money away for his high school tuition is making it so that they can't afford the farm. Izuku looks down at the ground knowing what he has to do, that he can't go to UA. This is not something that is going to be happening anytime soon. Maybe he can go to another school. Maybe something that isn't that expensive. Or maybe just stay on the farm to help his family out. Because family comes first. Being a hero comes second. Izuku would be very disappointed and would leave the 
the letter on the counter right where he had left it. For the following next couple of days, he would be really upset, but any time that his family would look at him, he would have a smile on his face and pretend everything's okay. You guys know how that goes. Izuku is doing his best not to let it show, but eventually Inko and Hayashi would end up noticing that something's off. He simply chalks it up to being a random little phase, and they both have no clue what could possibly be the problem, so they just leave it alone. Eventually, the first day of UA happens, and Izuku just says bye mom and dad, he throws on his uniform and ends up flying around wondering what he should do. When eventually, he hardens his nerves and decides, I mean, there's nothing he can do. Of course he got accepted into UA with that performance, but what's he gonna do after, after his parents can't afford the farm? Like, what are they gonna do? Live out on the streets? He can't let his family be homeless over some dream of becoming a hero? He thinks to himself that quitting the course is what's best for everybody, and he ends up flying to that of UA, where once he arrives, he requests to speak to Nezu. The heroes would end up obliging, and Aizawa would ask him why he wasn't there. He would say that he's exactly coming here for that same reason, to talk to Nezu about it, and Aizawa would take him to Nezu's office, where Izuku would sit down and would look at Nezu, then going on to say, Hey, uh, principal, got a second? Nezu would say, Oh, of course, Izuku. Papa C, would you like some tea? Izuku says, uh, yeah, sure, thank you. He accepts it and begins drinking and thinking to himself, wow, this is really good. But from here, Neza would say, so what can I help you with, young man? When Izuku would then go on to explain to him that he's thankful for the opportunity to be in a course like UA, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to pay the tuition. He's not going to be able to pay his own like life things if he attends a school, saying that thank you so much for the opportunity, but asking Stan that this is not going to be a possibility for him, saying thank you for his time, getting up and beginning to walk away, before Nezu would say, wait, what are you talking about? And Izuku says, I mean, didn't you hear me? Nezu would say, I heard you all right, but that shouldn't be an issue. We can have that all covered. A hero of your caliber to not attend this school? That would be a crime. That would be like, like doing the worst thing ever. A hero with a potential like yours to not attend this school would just be lunacy. It just wouldn't make sense. He looks at Izuku and Izuku's eyes would immediately light up asking if he's serious. Nezu would say that he's going to be having a full ride to this school with everything covered. Not only that, but he also ends up handing Izuku a $10,000 check for the money that his parents would have already put into the UA high school to get him as far as he did. Izuku holds the check in his hand and tears begin coming out of his eyes as he just thanks Nezu. And the kid cannot thank him enough. Let, let me put that into words. He cannot thank him enough. Imagine you can't afford to pay your school and suddenly your principal hands you a scholarship and $10,000. That, that right there, that's enough to make a grown man cry. Izuku, after this, would fly home to tell his family the good news and he would end up telling them that he saw the note the day that he took the anxious exam. They would say that they actually ended up suspecting that, but that, you know... They tried not to say anything about it as to not put him down. And Izuku says that things have changed. They would ask what he's talking about and he informs them on the good news. They're all extremely ecstatic and they end up paying off all the bills that they had to pay off when Izuku would then go on to tell them that he promises to make them proud at the school. They would both nod telling him that they know he's going to make them proud. And from here, the next day of UA would finally arrive. Izuku flies to that of UA high and once he makes it to the door of his classroom, he takes in a deep breath before thinking to himself, this is it, the path to becoming a hero. I can't wait for what awaits for me. He takes a step inside, only to see everybody sitting around and wondering what's going on. He goes to the front of the classroom and introduces himself as Izuku Midoriya, saying sorry he's here late, that he was caught up yesterday. The people of the class would look at him and say, welcome. You know, a bunch of the lighthearted people would welcome him with open arms. And someone like Bakugo would say, we didn't miss you at all. Go to your seat, loser. From here, Izuku just looks at him with a mean smart snarl and just decides to take a seat. And out of nowhere, from the corner of his eyes, he notices someone. Now, this someone is extremely gorgeous in his eyes. This would be Momoyai Rozu. And yes, I know, I know, I know. I know what you're going to say and think. Another Momo ship. Yes, another Momo ship. Who would have been a better option for this what if? You tell me in the comments down below because I'm not about to have this be started at all. Anywho, though, 
All Might from here would end up bursting through the door after Izuku introduces himself and takes a seat. And he would proceed to say that he's walking through the door like a normal person before then opening the wall to reveal all of their hero costumes. Now, when Izuku sees his, he is ecstatic and everybody would go to the changing rooms to put on their costumes. However, before I get into the next part of the what if, first, I need to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Fandom. As anime fans, we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel. But something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. Jumping back into the story, we immediately cut to Izuku and everybody else with their heroes, uh, hero suits on, and everybody would be pretty much complimenting each other. Everyone's hero suit, with the exception of Todoroki's, is awesome. And All Might would actually see Izuku's costume and think to himself that it's pretty reminiscent to one of his, uh, one of his old costumes. He would ask him if he got some inspiration from him, and Izuku would kind of like put his hand behind his head, saying that he's guilty as of 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 what he ended up pretty much asking him. All Might laughs, and Izuku would say that he thinks it actually suits him, with All Might saying, oh, he, he of course thinks the same thing. I mean, he looks even better in it than he does, saying that the color scheme was definitely a good choice, and that the blue and the red contrast each other perfectly, with Izuku actually being clowned on by Bakugo for having his underwear on the outside. Everybody else would actually defend him, saying that, you know, that choice was actually awesome. And Bakugo would begin to wonder to himself why everybody's hyping him up so much. Eventually though, All Might would explain the rules of the Heroes vs Villains event, and the two pairings would actually end up being Deku and Momo versus Todoroki and Invisible Girl. And yes, I chose Deku and Momo on purpose so Izuku could get the chance to show off for Momo, if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, eventually the test would start and Izuku would tell Momo to simply stay behind him that he's going to be single handedly helping them pass, asking her about her quirk and doing a little bit of small talk with Momo, kind of flirting it up a little bit, but nothing too, you know, too deep. That said though, eventually they would end up making it to the third floor of the exam place where they would notice that it's extremely cold. I mean, even Momo was getting a little cold. She would make herself a jacket and from here they would continue going up to the floor where Todoroki and Invisible Girl were at. Once there, Izuku thinks to himself what the coolest thing that he could possibly do would be. And so he decides that he's just gonna punch the door down. He does so and it actually ends up being sent flying towards Todoroki who has to dodge out of the way. But by the time that he gets up, Izuku's standing right in front of him in such an awesome pose. And Todoroki would immediately shoot ice at him, shooting a small geyser at him. But the ice would simply hit Izuku and he would not move. He would be frozen in solid ice. Todoroki would wonder to himself if maybe he took it a little too far, but this is when the ice would begin to vibrate due to him using his super speed, and it begins melting as Izuku breaks straight out of it and then looks at Todoroki and says that it's no fun to play that way, before Todoroki shoots another geyser at him, but Izuku uses his super breath to just break the ice before it can even get to him. And then from there, would go on to look towards the direction of Invisible Girl who was trying to wrap him up with the tape, before saying that he could see her. He has x-ray vision. Momo would just be watching all of this go down in the span of a couple of seconds, wondering to herself just how strong this kid is, before Izuku would then look to them and take them both out before then rushing to the bomb and touching it so that All Might could finally say the magic words. Hero team wins. Everybody who's watching this would be extremely ecstatic at what's happening and All Might would just have his questions answered perfectly. He now knows that he wants to give all for one to Izuku. And so he would begin to actually tell Izuku to actually stay after class with him introducing himself and his injury as well as one for all to Izuku, telling him that he wants him to be his successor. Deku, upon hearing everything, would think about it for a second and say, you know, my, I've, I've looked up to you for such a long time, but I say, let someone else have it. Look. Honestly, I've looked up to you my whole life, and there's really nothing I'd want more than to accept your quirk. But mom and dad have always told me to help others, and 
Something like that could change another person's life, you know? Give it to someone more deserving. Maybe with no strength to do things alone. Maybe someone quirkless. Someone with a heroic heart. All Might stops to think about this and then looks to Izuku and asks him if he's sure. And Izuku would tell him that he already has all that he needs to become a pro hero, with All Might telling him that he could save the world with a quirk like this with his power. But Deku says that he already can. He's one step closer with him being in the school. And All Might just decides to accept what Izuku's saying. I mean, it is his choice and he's not going to force something onto Izuku. But All Might would just have one request of Izuku. He wants to know just how strong he really is. And Izuku would look at him before saying, you want to spar? All Might would say, precisely young Midoriya. We pick our story off with Izuku and All Might heading off to an area where they practice their super moves in the My Hero Academia story. This is when both of them begin to look at each other and stretch, as All Might says he will try to hold back, with Izuku simply smiling thinking about how he's gonna get to fight his idol All Might. This is amazing, he never thought he would be in this position. Two seconds would pass and boom! Shockwaves begin to be produced from the punches that are being thrown with All Might smiling saying that he's quite skilled. But can he keep up with 100% as he throws a haymaker and Deku would dodge it, seeing it come at him in almost slow motion. As Deku says, sure I can, how about you? As he comes in and this man proceeds to use his enhanced breath to send All Might flying. Honestly, in the original script, I was going to say to blow him away. But I decided not to just because I knew what you guys were about to do in the comment section. So I avoided that. <laughs> Anyways, though, at this point, he would then go on to shoot his heat vision at All Might, causing All Might to have to dodge midair with the, with the, by using his wind pressure. And this would let Izuku appear right behind him. As All Might would go to throw a punch at Izuku's like chest, but my man would straight stand there like a rock solid mountain. And it would do absolutely nothing to him as his cape would wave in the wind and he would cut both hands together as he hits All Might smashing this man straight to the ground as All Might would land and crash into the rubble and Deku would simply land right next to him with All Might who was now completely out of breath and would de-transform on the spot gasping for air saying <laughs> wow Izuku that was some power I'm glad you'll be the next number one hero but tell me something did you go all out Izuku just looks confused and says, I don't know, I've never tried. I usually hold back as to not hold people, but I knew I could let loose a bit on you. With All Might laughing, saying, you hit like a train, Izuku. With, you know, Deku just laughing before Recovery Girl would arrive and she would proceed to heal All Might, leaving Deku to fly home at supersonic speeds. From here, we cut to a week filled with Izuku trying to get Momo's attention, being goofy, making her laugh, trying to crack some jokes in the middle of class, with everybody in, in class 1A noticing that Izuku definitely likes Momo, and Momo and Izuku kind of having a little bit of a flirtatious relationship early on, just due to the nature of Izuku making him liking her very clear, and her definitely giving him the time of day, because, I mean, look at Izuku, the man is... A, shredded this man has muscles on his muscles on his muscles so yeah not only that but he's at the top of the class when it comes to strength and everybody saw that being displayed in the heroes versus villains she has nothing bad to say about izuku so eventually he and her begin to plan something out saying that maybe they can go out one of these days momo would agree saying that hopefully he can keep up with her saying that she knows that he's a big shot in the hero world but she doesn't know how he'll do with her. And Izuku simply would smirk saying, hopefully he does well. From here, Aizawa would bust into the classroom and he would proceed to inform everybody about the U, uh, the eventual USJ event with everybody having to get permission slips line, signed. And then we're just kind of going to be having a mini time skip to when they're actually on the, tr on the bus. By the way, guys, a uh, quick tangent. If you guys hear my chair squeaking out of nowhere, I just want to say uh, sorry about it real quick. But this chair is loud a lot of times, and that's why you guys will hear like a little bit of squeaking every now and then. That said, they would end up arriving at the U at the USJ, and from here, this is where we would see a lot of things begin to kind of align with the canon story. I mean, Kurogir would arrive, and as soon as this happens, and Kirishima would say, "Awesome villains." You know, Aizawa would jump down saying, those are real villains. But as soon as Izuku hears that, he immediately knows what he has to do. 
And Izuku proceeds to use his super breath to shoot Kurogiri away. Like this man, Kurogiri gets blasted away from the area. And Izuku from here proceeds to land in front of in front of Aizawa with the superhero landing. Iconic with Superman. From here, Aizawa looks to Izuku as this man proceeds to dominate each and every single one of the villains that were standing nearby Shigaraki. With Shigaraki thinking to himself, Kurigiri, get up and help me now. Summon the Nomu. But by the time that Kurigiri finally ends up arriving there and actually summoning the Nomu to, Kuri, uh, to Shigaraki, Shigaraki simply has to bear witness as Izuku completely demolishes all of the villains that he had laying near him. And when he sees this, he proceeds to say, Nomu, kill the brat, leaving the Nomu to rush in and roar at the top of its lungs as it rushes in and punches Izuku square in the face with Izuku's face turning ever so slightly and then saying, and then spitting out a little bit of blood, a little bit, just, just, no, 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 no blood at all. He would literally just spit out and say, is that it? Before he then proceeds to turn and punch this Nomu, sending it straight flying out of the entire USJ. You know how All Might hit it like a hundred something times and then finally was able to send it flying? No, this man Izuku wasn't playing no types of games. He hit the Nomu and sent this man flying out of the USJ. That was it. GG's. Nothing else for the Nomu. Please, this man is done for. But after this happens, we see Shigaraki and Kurokiri utterly terrified. They are scared and it is not okay because what ends up happening from here is Izuku appears in front of uh, Kurogiri as, uh, no, 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 not Kurogiri, but Shigaraki as he tries to place five fingers on him, but Izuku grabs his hand and begins crushing it, essentially breaking Shigaraki's forearm to the point where Kurogiri would then have to teleport Izuku away, miles distance away, but Izuku would simply run back using a super speed to arrive in front of them right at the same time that he teleported away. So it was as if they had like two seconds to pretty much recuperate and regain themselves. But as fate would have it, Izuku would use his super breath to blast Kurigiri away once again, and then proceed to grab Shigaraki and slam his head into the ground, causing Shigaraki to essentially be just knocked out on the ground. From here, my man proceeds to fly towards Kurogiri's direction, who would teleport near Shigaraki and try to escape, but Izuku's not playing no types of games. He shoots his heat ray, his heat vision straight at the part that Kurogiri could actually be hit at. Since Izuku has his x-ray vision, he's clearly able to see it, and he would cause Kurogiri to be completely taken out. From here, the heroes would end up arriving, and All Might would bust through the door looking angry, thinking to himself that villains arrived, but he sees Izuku handle the situation like a boss, and all of the UA students didn't even have a chance to fight against any of the villains. Seeing as immediately after this, Izuku and all of the top 10 heroes were, would then go, go on to completely obliterate the rest of the villains that were left behind. And every single person who was in the USJ event that was a villain would be taken to Tartarus that same day. Like, could you imagine that? I know other what if YouTubers have done this where they like to kind of downplay Zuku being a Kryptonian or downplay his abilities and his strength and they make it so Shigaraki's able to get away. But no, let's be realistic here. Superman is not letting this man Shigaraki get away in any way, shape or form. I get it. In the show, sometimes weak villains are able to get the best of Superman, but that's because they fought him for such a long time. Their villains made specifically and tailored for him. But these villains, Shigaraki is a man child. There is no way, not even with Kurigiri, that he was going to be escaping from this man Izuku. It was not happening, and I was not about to write something like that. Not in my video. No, sir. This man Izuku was going to be as OP as I could possibly make him because that's just the reality of the situation. Izuku is a broken individual, and that's how the story is going to be carried. This is more of a of a, a slice of life what if if anything where it's just going to be like cool moments you know a lot of cool moments for izuku some heartwarming ones some funny ones you, you get the joke a little bit of shipping here and there because of izuku and momo but yeah 
That said, after Izuku proceeded to blow the villain's backs out using his powers and do everything that he had put on display in the USJ, the media would run away with the story and they would proceed to start calling Izuku the future number one hero, with multiple people actually trying to get in contact and interview Izuku during the one week that they have off of the USJ. And suffice to say, once they showed them here their checkbooks and how much he would get to be in these interviews, Izuku would gladly accept. Not only that, but during this week off, he would actually have his first date with Momo Yayorozu. And this would actually be very, very good for Izuku because he's able to actually take her out to France. She would pull up on Izuku. Or actually, no, Izuku would pull up on her and she would have a limo ready for them to go explore the city. But Deku says, I'm pretty sure you've been around this place for all your life. What's a place you've always wanted to go, go to, but you haven't quite had the chance yet? She would think and say, mm, France? And Izuku would say, here, put this on. He would give her like a tank of air to just breathe from, and he would tell her to close her eyes. As he begins to fly at supersonic speeds with, with, uh, with him holding Momo in his arms, and they arrive in France with him just wearing normal clothes, and Momo and himself simply just at some random cafe, eating like a croissant or something like that, I guess. But yeah, they proceeded then go and have a full on day in France where Momo and Izuku flirted up that entire day and essentially they get to know each other more than they already did. Not only that, but Izuku even ends up taking her to America to a bunch of fun places like Disneyland and yada yada yada. But since my man is who he is, he was getting a lot of stares from a lot of people Seeing as Izuku right now at the moment was one of the most famous heroes in all of Japan at the moment because of his coverage and story that he had at the USJ. That said, it would have been a very fun experience for the both of them and around this time she would actually ask him towards the end of the day how powerful he is. With Izuku saying, I don't know. And she would ask him why he's so strong. I mean, she gets quirks can be powerful, but it's as if Izuku has multiple quirks. He can fly, he has x-ray vision, he has super breath, he has heat vision. All those powers alone could make somebody a great hero, but you have all of them. Why is that? Izuku begins to wonder this, and once he's done with his date with Momo, he actually ends up asking his parents why this is. Why am I so strong? I mean, I never did get a quirk test. They would both, you know, even though they could have said, oh, well, let's just go get your quirk examined. They wouldn't lie to Izuku. I just don't see that being something that they would do. And instead, what ends up happening is essentially they proceed to take Izuku to a, another like small little farm, like garage thingamajigger, where they end up opening it. And inside would be the space pod that Izuku actually arrived on Earth with as they would begin to tell him, we found you in this. Izuku looks at them both shocked, asked, thinking to himself that maybe they're joking, but their faces are just as serious as ever. And Izuku would say, wait, you're, you're serious? They would both nod, and from here Izuku would go on to explore the pod. He clicks some random button and a projection of both of his parents holding a baby Izuku would appear, saying that the Earth doesn't, the planet has, doesn't have much time to live and that he's the last hope for their race. Before it turns off, and then this small little piece of kryptonite on his ship would just be sitting there. When Izuku gets near it, he feels his powers kind of begin draining from his body. And he pretty much gets weak and heavily. He would begin to tell his parents to keep that thing away from him because he doesn't know what it is, but it weakens him somehow. And his father would be like, I understand Izuku. I'll put it away. But from here, Izuku just looks at both of his parents and then would then proceed to tell them thank you so much for letting him know this. He understands why they didn't tell him sooner because he was young and he might not have reacted this way. But he would thank them for everything and say that in his eyes, they're his real parents. Maybe not biological, but they raised him. They taught him everything that he knows and he couldn't be more grateful for that. They would pretty much share and embrace and from here he would simply think to himself that he hopes his biological family is doing well as now we're going to be skipping over to the day of the ua festival where it just so happens that izuku is actually going to be the one in charge of actually giving out the speech for the event itself and this would go down just like it does in canon with Izuku pretty much going on to give this insane speech where everybody's just listening to everything that Izuku has to say and they are eating it up. So following this, Midnight would announce the first event, which is, of course, the race. And I'm not even going to sugarcoat this. Izuku mollywops everybody. This man is able to 
quite literally leap to the finish line. And that's not even a joke. When Todoroki tries using his eyes to freeze everybody, Izuku simply stands there as Todoroki gets a head start and smiles, thinking to himself that that was perfect. But, uh, Todoroki, I don't think he would count it for one thing. Heat vision! My man's Deku would proceed to proceed to... Would proceed to proceed to? <laughs> he proceeds to essentially melt the ice at his feet and then jump off to the finish line. With Todoroki watching as Izuku just zoomed past him and made it straight to the finish line. And Todoroki would just be shocked, thinking to himself how something like that could have possibly happened. But he just kind of has to accept it. And so, from here, the next events would be announced, with Izuku obviously be given the 10 million points, everybody would try to go against him, and his teammates would go as follow, Momo, Mineta, Uraraka, and Mei Hatsume, who wants to be on his team just because we all know why. That said, as soon as the event starts, Izuku actually would ask Mineta to create a bunch of sticky balls and actually attach them to each and every to, to them individually. And Momo, no, 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 I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Momo would create a saddle, and Deku would pretty much be the one holding all three of them. Where essentially what's about to happen is Izuku is just gonna fly up to the air to the point where they won't be able to catch him. And the only person who's gonna be potentially able to get near them would be somebody like Bakuya who could use his explosion quirk to shoot off of his team. Now, when this happens, realistically speaking, I see Izuku simply shooting his heat vision straight at the direction of Bakugo, more like warning shots and not actually hitting him because if he did hit him, Bakugo would die. So he begins to shoot warning shots and kind of grazes Bakugo with the heat vision and this sends a very clear signal to Bakugo letting him know hey maybe you know what maybe I shouldn't mess with the guy who has all of these powers and is potentially stronger than all mine maybe I shouldn't so he begins trying to go over after more weaker opponents and the cavalry battle event would end just like that. It's pretty simple and it's kind of like bland but it is what it is I mean an OP Zuku is gonna do OP Zuku things. That said, we now cut over to the fights, and I wish that something could happen differently, but I am going to be honest, this is something I see even Superman falling trapped to. As we all know, Izuku is going to have to fight against somebody like Shinso, right? Izuku isn't close with Ojiro in this version, he doesn't have the same personality, he is still kind, but he's not half as kind as the one in the original. I mean, he is, but he doesn't hang out with his crowd, so Ojiro doesn't even feel like telling Izuku. So instead, what ends up happening is after Ojiro and all the people who resign from the tournament do that, what ends up going down is essentially Izuku gets ready for his first match, right? Shinso is just kind of planning everything through, thinking of what to say, and just to throw this out there, in this version of events, my man Shinso is going to be chiseled. Like, this man is going to be having abs on his abs on his abs, my man. Like, this man is going to be ripped and have a Robin-like physique, where he's also going to be intelligent and just so happens to have a quirk that causes him to control people. I wonder where, I, I wonder if you guys can catch on to what I'm trying to do here. Yep. Shinso is kind of going to be like a Batman-esque character in this version, and him not making it to Class 1A definitely has him salty, admittedly. Instead, he is actually in Class 1B in this version, and yeah. So, what ends up happening is essentially Deku would get into the ring with Shinso, right? Shinso begins talking his stuff, and Izuku would commit the grave mistake of answering him. As soon as he does that, he's shocked, and Shinso would actually tell Izuku to rush in and make it look like they're both fighting. So Izuku would throw a punch very slowly, which Izuku would, which uh, Shinso would dodge, and using his, you know, his ability to out outplay this man Izuku, seeing as he's under control and seeing, as he doesn't have one for all at his disposal, he's not able to snap out of it. So Shinso's able to just hit him with a one-two haymaker and drop this man straight to the ground with Midnight declaring the match being over and people in the stands being like, what? Just like that? That's it? But Izuku snaps out of it and once he realizes what happens by looking up at the projector and seeing what Shinso's quirk did, instead of being angry like what many of you guys probably would have expected would have happened, Izuku just looks at Shinso and tells him that he definitely now has more to think about when it comes to the world of quirks. Thinking to himself that maybe just because he's durable against like physical attacks, that doesn't mean that he's going to always be durable against people like Shinso, who fight with their minds instead of with their fists. Shinso would say he could fight with his fists, it's just that they wouldn't really do much against him, 
seeing as when he did actually hit him, he feels as if he might have actually fractured a bone in his hand. Izuku would just laugh as he holds the back of his head, and Shinto would seriously have to go to recovery girl after punching this man Superman in the face. From here, we have Shinto going off on to face against Todoroki, but I'm going to keep it very simple with you guys. Shinto doesn't have any gadgets on him, so even though he's able to actually talk a smack to Todoroki, seeing as Todoroki just saw what happened to Izuku, he's able to actually outplay him, shoot ice at him, and send Izuku... Uh, no, not Izuku, but Shinso flying out of the ring. With the final match eventually being that of Todoroki versus Bakugo, but seeing as Bakugo won in the original with Todoroki not using his ice, I see no reason why that doesn't happen in this version as well. So, just like in canon, Bakugo would actually end up being the winner of the sports festival with him not accepting it, saying that not fighting against Izuku means that he's not the undisputable best. And the fact that Todoroki held back makes him want a fair, clean fight. But what's he going to do? He gets chained up and All Might still ends up giving him the medal just like he would have in the original. With All Might asking Izuku if he really was beat. And Izuku would say, admit it, yeah, he was beat. Shinso completely outsmarted him. And Izuku would say that that won't be happening a second time. So Shinso's definitely going to have to enjoy this victory. <sighs> oh, sorry, while it lasts. All Might would look to him and say, Atta boy. As from here, we cut to them all being in class and deciding who they're actually about to internship with. Izuku's looking through his options and eventually runs into that of Aizawa. Izuku would look to his teacher who's at the front of the class and Aizawa would simply give him like that, like, yup, you're right, I did send a, an invite to you. Izuku upon seeing it decides that maybe he should go to a hero like that. He might have a thing or two to learn from him. Not only that, but he's also going to be running into Shinso at that agency. So, yeah. By the way, his name is obviously going to be Superman. And so, we basically cut to Izuku on the train, heading to Aizawa's agency about two days later. When he would arrive outside the door, Aizawa would welcome them in and tell them that they better be ready to train like never before. Izuku would be pleasantly surprised to see Shinso there, and so both of them would kind of nod. From here, the Aizawa agency, seeing as there's not going to be any conflict to cover, and even if there is, Izuku would completely molly, molly -wat them. Instead, what I'm going to be having happen is essentially Aizawa takes them with him to go out on night patrols and stuff like that, while also teaching them to work on their weaknesses, which he has noticed. Izuku would work on his fighting skills without using his abilities, and he would also work on his stealth, while Aizawa would also try to cancel out his quirk. But one of these days, he would have ended up realizing that Izuku's quirk, for some reason, it just can't be cancelled. It's strange. He wonders why this is, but decides not to question further, just due to the fact that, I mean, it is what it is. The kid's quirk doesn't cancel, it's probably a mutation. But Izuku, he can already tell what Aizawa's thinking. He wanted to cancel his quirk, and Izuku could tell just by the fact that his eyes turned red and his hair began going up. So, Izuku would pull Aizawa to the side one day and tell him, yeah, so you're not going to be able to cancel my quirk because I don't have one. Aizawa looks at him and asks confused with a smile on his face asking if he's kidding. But Izuku just looks at him with a stern face and says, I'm not. Aizawa sensei, I'm truly quirkless. And I'm not from this planet either. That's where all my power comes from. Look above. Aizawa would look outside to see, you see the sun? Aizawa would nod and say, well... What, what about it? And Izuku would say, that's the source of my power. Every time that I'm near the sun, I grow stronger. I haven't flown out of this, or, you know, out of the atmosphere too many times, but from what I can tell, I can breathe in outer space. It's strange, but it works somehow. Aizawa looks at him and is genuinely like, what is going on? This kid is actually from space? Like, he's not kidding. And so... As Izuku would tell him that, Aizawa would end up saying that he won't say anything from here, and Shinso would have been uh, nearby overhearing this entire conversation. As the very next day, he would end up asking Izuku about it, saying, So, alien, pretty interesting. You have any weaknesses I should know of? With Izuku simply saying, Nah, not that he knows. He's pretty strong overall. Shinso just ends up deciding that that's not a good thing, because what if he was to one day go haywire? And Izuku would say it's not a big deal, seeing as he won't. His, uh, Shinso would keep a keen eye on him, but eventually he would soften up to Izuku and they would both end up creating a pretty decent relationship with each other, where Shinso has more of this serious personality and Izuku is more like lighthearted, chill, and likes to be around people. 
that said it from here like i said they work on their frauds zuku practices his fighting style and shinso works on his intelligent and stealth and strategies overall they end up having a very solid agency and yes just in case you guys are wondering ida doesn't dying because after all he goes after stain of the zuku not exactly being friends with ida and not really caring about any of that he doesn't actually end up getting involved and or helping ida with stain so he dies and after this ua would be under immense pressure for about a month with them being threatened to shut down however once it comes to the news that ida was the one who purposefully went after stain the charges would slowly begin diminishing with the media beginning to say that maybe it wasn't ua's fault maybe it was his own choices that led him there and eventually they would end up saying that it was neg negligence from ua but they would end up having to pay the ida family a huge sum amount of money but you know it is what it is and the school would eventually come back after about a month or so when they return this would be around the same period of time that the final exams would have happened and seeing as this is not exactly the most uh interesting part of the story i'm going to very quickly go right through it so obviously zuku studies for his exam just a little bit and he ends up acing it due to having an insane iq that said he would end up actually after that going to just watch as everybody else has their usual fights between student and teachers but Deku's different. He fights a little bit different, and by that, I mean that Izuku's test isn't going to be fighting against one teacher. It's going to be fighting against all of them at the same time. And I know this might sound like, wow, all of them at the same time? That's kind of interesting. Maybe this might actually be a challenge. But my man Superman has fought against the Justice League, and I'm sorry, but the Justice League would just destroy these heroes. So there is just no way that Izuku is going to be losing this fight. We would start off with All Might rushing and trying to hit uh, Izuku without any weights. And none of the teachers would even begin holding back. Aizawa would try jumping in and using some of his hand-to-hand -hand combat. But he gets completely outclassed and thrown to the side by Izuku. All Might gets outclassed in terms of physical speed. And Cementos would try to encase Izuku in something. However, Izuku would use his heat vision to blow a hole at the top and punch straight out. As he would arrive outside and we would see midnight begin using her pheromones to try to knock this man out except izuku uses his super breath and blows everything away like all of that all of that um smoke that was trying to be used against izuku would would counter the heroes and by that i mean that the heroes would actually be hit with it but seeing as they're all wearing masks to counter its effects they are not exactly affected by this so izuku would go back in and begin to pretty much pummel them all down getting a complete beat down on all the teachers with the exception of nezu because he understood that there was no way the heroes were going to win either way so after this happens the teachers all kind of have a little bit of a hit to their ego thinking to themselves that it was like 10 of them and one of him like this is insane they had the symbol of peace at their side this kid is a monster nezu himself would be thinking about how dangerous it could be if izuku was to have become a villain or something like that but he puts that to rest and eventually the forest training arc would commence now before i get into it and you guys were like oh my god i can't wait for the league of villains to attack them keep in mind that doesn't end up actually happening this time because if we really really stop to think about it izuku changed the story quite a bit and what do i mean by that well remember back in the usj when izuku took out shigaraki and threw him in jail yeah he's in jail and he's not going to be anywhere near the heroes to make his little uh his little attack on the forest camp so it's a normal camp izuku ends up training with class 1a he ends up doing a bit of a little bit of training with uh shinso since he's a part of class 1b and overall everybody ends up getting a pretty cool experience out of this with them all having their quirks tested with the exception of izuku with following these events having the provisional hero license exam right around the corner but if i'm being completely honest there is no high stakes here i mean in the original kind of because izuku is not that strong and we never knew how these things were going to go but i mean let's be honest the first event is throwing balls at each other and izuku is not going to be having any trouble dodging them i mean the man can move at supersonic speeds that's not an issue for him he's immediately able to tap somebody with his uh with his balls and he takes them out leading to him actually winning very very early on and then being sent to the waiting room where he now has to watch as everybody else has to finish doing their own thing eventually they have to do their saving with uh, everybody else like has to save the fake injured people and he does it flawlessly he even ends up soloing gang orca by himself by simply you know how gang orca shoots out his like his noise 
like that that sound wave izuku literally shoots his breath at it and it cancels it out like bro that's op but izuku by the end of everything ended up getting his provisional hero license bakugo fails because he's bakugo todoroki fails because he's bakugo and everybody else ends up passing that after this we have the eventual meeting of the class uh the class 3a heroes mirio tamiki and nezre they all introduce themselves to the class as the big three of ua and azawa actually ends up telling izuku that he could learn a thing or two from this kid mirio mirio looks to izuku and keep in mind this version of mirio doesn't have one for all because all might genuinely took to heart what he said he remembered his root and how he himself was a quirkless individual who grew through the ranks and he thinks that maybe he could find another kid with ideals similar to him to become like the next number three hero or something seeing as mirio already is probably going to become the number two pretty pretty soon so all might simply would begin looking for a quirkless successor with a brilliant heart and you know the goal to want to become powerful and save people Someone similar to what Izuku was like in the original events of the story. And I'm going to be honest, there's quite a lot of people like that in this world. If I do, if, if we really think about it, 20% of the world is quirkless. So while that might be hard, it's not going to be impossible. That said, he ends up finding his own candidate for becoming the symbol of peace or whatever eventually. And yeah. So Mirio still ends up challenging the entire class. However, he actually ends up challenging them all separately, with the exclusion of Izuku not being part of them. Because if he truly was, he would molly up Mirio. I don't want to hear it about Mirio's permu per per permutation, permutation or whatever. Whatever it is, his ability is. Per 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 oh my god, why am I having such a hard time saying his quirk name? But you guys know what I mean. Even if Mirio was to hypothetically use his quirk to pretty much go through the ground and pop up unexpectedly, Izuku could read this man Mirio like a book. I mean, he saw the Flash moving as if he was going in slow motion when he was attacking him in the Justice League movie. So somebody like Mirio, who doesn't have half that speed, should be a walk in the park. Mirio would try it after taking out the rest of the class like phasing through the ground and popping up with an uppercut, but Izuku just dodges and Mirio watches as Izuku just outclasses him in speed. He ends up hitting him in the stomach, sending Mirio crashing outside of the building, and when Mirio comes to, he is like, what happened? With everybody explaining to him that it was fast. I mean, he blitzed at him, and then Izuku punched him square in the stomach without him even having the ability to react. Mirio, after seeing that, would be like, you are awesome. He begins having the utmost praise for Izuku, and he would end up inviting him to his agency, which revolves with Nada. Now, when Izuku ends up arriving there, Nada actually tells him that there's one requirement, make him laugh. And this Izuku would definitely be able to make him laugh. He doesn't actually end up doing the All Might face impression like our normal Izuku would, and instead, he would end up doing something else. I don't know what could possibly make Sir Night Eye laugh, but he does something that makes him laugh, and it works. So, suffice to say, we now cut to Mirio and Izuku doing their patrol, right? And just like in the original, the airy stuff happens, except this time it happens a bit differently. This time, Izuku arrives because he hears airy in panic. He can hear what's going on. He has super hearing, after all. So... When Izuku hears a small girl in distress, he immediately flies over towards the alleyway and would see Kai Chisaki, or Overhaul, pretty much running after her, trying to keep her away. Izuku would land right in between both of them, with Overhaul asking what a hero is doing here. He would say that it's just his daughter running away, and Izuku would say, Honestly, I don't quite believe that's your daughter. Chisaki would give off intense murderous intent, but Izuku is not having any of this. Izuku pretty much goes towards Overhaul and begins to tell him to walk away by putting his hand on his shoulder, but Overhaul begins to pretty much put his hand on Izuku and almost touch him, but Izuku pulls away and Overhaul gets angry before he then proceeds to touch the ground and send spikes flying at Izuku's direction. Izuku dodges all of them and ends up noticing that one of them was going to hit Eri. Luckily, however, Mirio jumped in right in the nick of time and saved her, and Deku just turned back to Overhaul saying his quirk has to do with his hands. 
Looks like he's not going to be using those for a while. Izuku would blitz right in front of him, grab him by the wrists, and like shatter them. He just squeezes Overhaul's arm, shattering this man's wrists, and leaving him to scream out in pain as what just happened. Just, you know, it happened. Following this, Izuku would look to Mirio and ask him if she's okay. And the girl would nod before Izuku gives her the brightest smile that could light up a room and he would then tell her that she'll never have to be scared again. Telling her that he's going to be her big brother from now on. With Eri giving him the biggest smile ever and Izuku and Eri just both getting along. From here, we end up cutting to Overhaul being thrown in Tartarus and having a uh, having his quirk cancellation bullets terminated. Seeing as, you know, they weren't about to do anything to him. So, yeah. That ends up going down, and from here, we end up cutting to the very next event that happens in, well, UA. The UA School Festival arc. Now, the way that I see this going down is Izuku is not going to be forgetting the stuff like he would have in the original. Keep in mind that in the normal events of canon, Izuku forgot his things, and therefore ended up running into Gentle and La Brava. But this time, that doesn't happen. Izuku is more than smart enough to keep in mind that he has to bring a couple of things. And so, he does so resulting to them having a pretty successful festival up until when they were all about to perform their you know their iconic show however that's when gentle arrives at the top of the building and before he even has a chance to like announce himself or turn on the camera izuku notices him and hears his intentions of ruining everything by being a dastardly criminal and izuku would simply proceed to essentially fly over there at supersonic speeds and just grab la brava and gentle by the heads and slam them into each other causing them both to be knocked out he just leaves them there until the end of their performance and then takes them to the authorities for them both to be taken into custody <laughs> which honestly it's pretty funny when you really think about it from here, we have the pro hero arc, which eventually, cons which essentially was the time when Izuku, Todoroki, and Bakugo all worked together under Endeavor. But instead, Izuku and Shinsu are going to be working under Aizawa once more, stopping a bunch of criminals from doing a bunch of things. And Izuku would get huge popularity rankings from people all over because he's able to stop villains as if it's nothing. It's a walk in the park for him. Izuku's parents, they're so proud of him. I mean. They couldn't have expected any more from their baby, and they're just, just happy. How else do I put it? They are ecstatic. That's all I could really say. Following that, we end up jumping to the joint training arc. And I love arcs like these where the students end up actually fighting against each other because, I don't know, they're, they're just fun to me. But Izuku's team would end up going up against Class 1B's team, which would include... Okay, so Izuku's team is going to be Uraka, Min Mina, and Mineta versus Shinso, Monoma, and the other three background characters. Why is it five? Because Izuku's on one team. So they kind of try to even things out a little bit. That said, though, the way that I see this battle going down is essentially Shinso would try to use his brainwashing quirk on Izuku by using his stealth and the things that he would have learned from, well, Izawa, but Izuku's able to use his x-ray vision to pretty much locate Shinso's location and appear behind him, asking him what he thinks he's doing. Shinto would be shocked and use his scarf to pretty much grapple away uh, to another location before Izuku appears before him once more and tells him that it's not going to be working ever again before he then appears in front of Shinso and crushes his device that he uses to change voices with. As Izuku tells him that, yeah, he's getting thrown in jail. And before Shinso knows it, by the time that he blinks, he appears inside the cage, wondering how that happened so fast. But he would simply look down and think to himself that, yeah, Izuku, he's just too broken to be stopped. He would then go on to obliterate the rest of the team and everybody watching, including the Pro Hero Commission, would be thinking that that Izuku kid, he has some quirk. They would end up coming to a, a, a concession, which would end up being that Izuku is honestly way too powerful to even be in the Pro Hero course anymore. And so they end up deciding to make him debut as a Pro Hero early on, with a couple of months of training ahead of his class in a special course that's going to teach him how to run an agency and do things like those, those types of things. Now, the Meta Liberation Army, it's still a thing. So how do I how do I cover that? How do I cover that? Okay, so Deku is obviously going to be a hero, right? 
And as soon as he does become one in a couple of months, he begins rising through the ranks. Keeping in mind that the League of Villains pretty much got shut down in the USJ arc, they're not there to actually take out the Liberation Army. So what ends up happening is the Hero Commission would actually task Izuku with taking out the Hero Liberation Army. And what ends up happening is Izuku, he agrees. He's like, sure thing, I'll get that done for you by sundown. Izuku would fly towards their direction and bust in through the windows of the area where the main villain is at. And all of the other villains could not have been none the wiser. I mean, Izuku busted in so fast, nobody could even notice. But Izuku then goes to the leader and asks him what his whole organization is here for. He explains his goals, his, his thought process, and why he's doing what he's doing. With him saying that Redestro's ideals are going to live on no matter if he kills him. But Izuku would look to him and say, kill you? Dude, I'm not a villain. I'm not about to kill you. He says, I'm too good for that. And then the villain would say, good, because I'm not too big for that. As he begins using his quirk and growing in size, pretty much destroying the top of the entire area, leading to Izuku saying, so it's going to be like that then. Fine. As from here, Izuku decides to pretty much punch him and grab him by the neck and fly him all the way to the atmosphere of space to the point where Redestro could not even breathe anymore. And once they were up there, Izuku would simply look at him once before then asking, are you done? And Redestro, he's just getting purple in the face. He's like, <laughs> like he can't breathe. And he's like, yeah, how can you? But that's like, that's all he can finally say before passing out. And Izuku flies him back down to the Meta Liberation Army, in which all of them just watch as their leader is being held by the, the throat by this hero. He would end up telling them to each of them individually turn themselves in, saying that they should not try anything funny. The ice user from the Meta Liberation Army would shoot his ice at Izuku's direction, and Izuku would shoot his laser beam right at it, causing it to just get destroyed in the process, with Izuku telling him that he's not playing, that they have one choice and one choice only, before then shooting a super breath at them, knocking a bunch of the people back in the front row, and then proceeding to shoot into into the air with his uh with his flying ability to simply take Redesha to prison following this the authorities would arrive and they would begin to end up actually taking them to prison and a lot of them would be taken out in a very uh a hard manner i guess you could say because a bunch of them tried fighting back but izuku and a bunch of other pro heroes being present for the incarceration of the villains would make things run as smooth as butter that said, though, we pretty much end up cutting to a kind of ceremony for Izuku after he ended up getting paid after getting paid his first million dollars for being a hero. Izuku gives half of his check to his parents and ends up giving a huge speech where he pretty much thanks everybody, all of you, for watching this video to the end. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for the first, the second, and the third installment. We all knew this series wasn't going to be a long one, but it was great while it lasted, and I genuinely had a lot of fun with the first, second, and third part of this series. If you guys end up watching this in the full movie version, make sure to comment down below that you're here and hashtag full movie that you made it to the end. That said though, I love each and every single one of you guys. Remember to become a member if you want to get early access to my videos sooner. But with that being said, I love each and every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether and I am out. Peace.